Welcome to Securing America with me, Frank Gaffney, the program that's a kind of owner's manual for protecting the country we love against all enemies, foreign and domestic, to God's glory and that of his kingdom. A man who has devoted much of his professional life to understanding the threats we face, the challenges to protecting this country, and the nature of the enemies that we confront is our first guest. I'm very pleased to say he's a regular here at Securing America. His name is J.R. or Jeff Nyquist, uh, one of the greatest strategic thinkers I know and an invaluable source of uh, analysis as well as information about the sorts of challenges we try to focus on here. He's the author, among other things, of The Origins of the Fourth World War, and blogs at jrnyquist.blog. It's good to have you with us, Jeff. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You had a very powerful piece the other day about um, Archbishop Vigano, and I'm interested in, well, talking a little bit about him. I've been an admirer of his uh, and the courage that he has brought to a lot of topics, including notably the global reset uh, and problems within the Catholic Church, for that matter. But as a prism to sort of examine some of what's wrong with thinking on the part of, well, a number of our friends even, about Ukraine, Russia, NATO, uh, this seems to me to be a, a, a good analytic exercise and I'd invite you to talk a little bit about that, maybe starting with what Vigano is getting wrong about those three. Well, he, what he's getting wrong is he's, he's basically accepting Russian poison, Russian propaganda as truth. And whatever truths Vigano has stated before, whatever courageous stance he's taken, the well is now poisoned because now he's repeating the Russian lies about Ukraine. He's saying that basically uh, Ukraine is a corrupt puppet government that is that is uh, a part of the enemies of the United States, that the same people that are trying to oppress us here in America are the same people that are running Ukraine, and that Putin is then therefore the enemy of our enemy. In other words, he's our ally, our natural ally. And this is a very dangerous narrative. And... I guess, unfortunately, as with a lot of propaganda, there's always some element of truth to it. And I think it's fair to say that there are people, uh, the, the Clinton machine, for example, that have been deeply involved with corrupt activities in Ukraine for years, the Biden crime family as well, that have been uh, implicated in some aspects of this story. But specifically, the idea that Vigano is, I think, um, putting forward is, uh, and I, I can never pronounce his name right, Vigano, I think is how he pronounces it. Oh, is it Vigano? Okay. I think so. Um, but the point is, uh, he's really embraced the idea that, uh, it seems, Russia is not just the enemy of our enemy, but is in fact a defender of Christendom and a reliable partner uh, for us in both this contest, uh, obviously, but also, uh, I suppose, in connection with China. And your thoughts on those topics? Yeah, you had a group of um, uh, Russian Orthodox clergy in Murmansk, you know, basically saying that this was a holy war, uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, that they were fighting the evil New World Order kind of thing. Well, the, the problem is a lot of people have this wrong idea that Putin is a Christian and that he's fighting the enemies of Christendom. And, and because Putin wears a cross or he supports the Russian Orthodox Church, uh, the fact is the Russian Orthodox Church is controlled by agents of the Kremlin. Uh, agents of the KGB were ruling that church from the time of Stalin. Um, it, is a, it is a church that has been used to subvert other churches. You, you know, the, uh, it, it is a church that has been used to confuse Christians around the world. So... And now it's still well, as, confusing. As part, notab notably of the Soviet efforts to subvert Christianity. Yeah, the the uh, world, world council of the world role of, of the churches. Yeah, the role of the yeah the 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 role of the uh, Russian Orthodox Church under control of the KGB in 
glo- in world Christian organizations like the World Council of Churches or National Council of Churches, I'm forgetting the name now, uh, has been very negative. And in terms of liberation theology, um, so the distortion of theology. So in a way, uh, the Archbishop is has uh, accepted uh, a propaganda that's very subversive of his own faith because these are enemies of the Catholic Church ultimately. And and when when you have Alexander Dugan, who is uh, you know who is in some forums, some of the same forums saying the same things that Archbishop Vigano is saying, then you have a problem. Yeah, this is a man who professes to be a confidant of uh, an influence on Vladimir Putin. I'm not sure whether that's true or not, but he certainly is a prominent uh, Russian nationalist and uh, hostile to us, among others. Um, uh, Jeff, one one other point of this, uh, Vigano um, seems to be buying lock, stock, and barrel, the idea that uh, NATO is accurately regarded by Putin as a threat, and that uh, as a result, his actions to try to contend with it, um, keeping it away from his borders, among other things, is uh, is legitimate. Uh, your thoughts on that topic? Yeah. No. Well, you see, the problem is, is you have such a thing as sovereignty. And uh, when a country is sovereign, it can make alliances with who it wants. It can negotiate with who it wants. And, and as, as far as a ship that has sailed, Ukraine only wants to be a member of of NATO because it feels threatened by Russia. It if if, if it evidently has good reason to feel threatened. It has good reason to, to feel threatened. I mean, look, if 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 NATO was really a threat, wouldn't then Ukraine want to join with Russia to fight the big threat of NATO? Um and and then you have to claim then it's not the Ukrainian people, which is what the archbishop says it's not the Ukrainian people fighting this, it's the puppet government. Well, it is actually the Ukrainian people who do not want to be a part of Russia. And we can all see that not only in the fact that President Zelensky was was elected by a 73 percent in a 73 percent, you know, majority landslide. That's not a puppet government. I mean, if you have a, a landslide like that, you're not a puppet. It, this is Zelensky does represent the Ukrainian people here in this. And the Ukrainian people are actually out fighting and dying for their government, for their sovereignty, and opposing Russia. So, just to quickly, you know, capture all of this, uh, you're saying, as I understand it, Jeff, uh, in contrast to what the Archbishop has been pushing, that Ukraine is a matter of interest to us. Um, its future, its sovereignty, its freedom is very much part of, you know, our national interests. That Russia is actually a threat, not just to Ukraine, obviously, but to uh, Western civilization, freedom, Christendom, as you wish, and that NATO is in fact a voluntary alliance of sovereign nations seeking to band together, essentially to deal with a threat that not just Ukraine, but perhaps uh, others, including NATO members, are currently feeling as well. Yeah, I think what's really fascinating about Ukraine and all the Eastern European countries like Poland, like Romania, uh, they really understand Russia is a threat. They really understand that Russia is dangerous because they've been oppressed by Russia. And the Ukrainians have. And I think where the, the some of the West European uh, countries that have been traditional NATO members maybe don't understand it as well, don't feel it as well. You wonder if they really are going to fight. You wonder if the Germans really have any fight in them. And it's like if the future of the alliance may be in these Eastern countries, the ones yeah. that really the, understand. The new Russia. Europe, as Don Rumsfeld used to call it. Yes, them, as I, to old there Europe. was truth in what he said Hold there. the thought. Yeah. Hold the thought. We're going to come back with further conversation with Jeff Nyquist uh, on the other side of a very short break. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about those who are championing some of these misleading ideas in our own country, uh, notably former Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. That and more straight ahead. 